Welcome, Thunderbird Nation, to the Thunderbird Coaches Show. Uh, this is episode nine. It's a beautiful fall day here in Cedar City. Uh, we're all excited to be here. The, uh, the Thunderbird Coaches Show is brought to you by the Warehouse Bar and Kitchen. The Warehouse Bar and Kitchen celebrating their two-year anniversary this October. Follow them on their social media to stay up to date on all the fun they have scheduled. The Warehouse Bar and Kitchen would also like to invite students over 21 to come to their Halloween events. The Warehouse will be hosting live band and having a huge uh, Halloween dance party. And it's free if you're 21 or over. So the Warehouse would also like to remind you to stay safe this Halloween season and always drink responsibly. That's the Warehouse Bar and Kitchen, ladies and gentlemen. Great sponsors of the show. Uh, love to go down there with Coach, down there at lunchtime. Come by, come by uh, lunchtime. Um, you might see us there, hanging out after the show around noon. So, um, <clears throat> shout out to the Warehouse Bar and Kitchen. All right, Coach. <clears throat> Let's break this down. Uh, we, headed, uh, we headed on Friday, Friday afternoon out to uh, Abilene, Texas to... Uh, to match up against Abilene Christian University, um, man, what a what a what a, an amazing facility! First off, that's you know when we when we pulled in there, I, I saw the brand new baseball uh, stadium. I we we rolled into uh, the the football stadium there, which is new in I believe 2017. It was like a 50 million dollar uh, build out there. Incredible atmosphere to play football. Or at least an incredible, an incredible um, uh, stadium to play football in, and uh, you know it was. We we talk about facilities, uh, we're not going to get all the way into that right now. But man, there's a lot that could, if uh, if we can get creative and, and we can get a uh, you know some people on board that that would like to support us financially. There's a lot of fun things that could be done to enhance the program, uh, uh, all athletics, let alone football. So. Um, anyway, let's 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 take a look at the game, Coach. What did you see uh, at Abilene Christian University? It was really paining you not to tell us what a good time you had on Saturday, wasn't? It? Like like it was hard for you. Everything I could do. It was, you, you you wanted to tell us what a great time and a great time and I know um, I, I've been told. In fact, I got so so uh, number thirty three, Mister Payne, his father after the game came up to me and he said. I'm with Coach. I don't want to hear about you having fun after a loss. Felton understands it. Al- so, hey, Felt- Alabama guy. Yeah. He, un- he understands it. They understand football in Alabama. You know, when you say it to me, it hits. But when he says it to me, this man, I mean, you see his son. He's He is, <laughs> he is chiseled out of the same stuff. And, hey, uh, Felton's, so- Felton's, every, Felton's every bit of 6'2 and 275 and rocked up and ready to go. Yeah. He, yeah. So when he tells me he, something, I listen. <laughs> you listen. You listen when he talks. <laughs> anyway, back to uh, let's, let's talk about Abilene. Yeah. Um, hey, great trip. Uh, as far as as the way a trip should be, you know, char- charter plane for two hours and fifteen minutes, and you land, and you're ten minutes from the hotel, and everything's right there in town, and not, nothing out of the way. It was it was good. It was good. And and you're right. You walk into their facility. You walk into their facility, and it's different. It's different than what we have here, um, and we've got to get around to that and start moving towards the, those type of facilities. Um, our, our student athletes at this university deserve it. Uh, but been waiting a long time, and they deserve some thanks. Um, but but hey, gamesmanship. Uh, the, the gamesmanship. We're doing a walkthrough on Friday evening, and their players just walk into the stadium and sit down. I, I love it. Uh, they have a hundred percent chance of us returning the favor next year. We're just going to hang out and watch them walk through. <laughs> so this, know. this, I mean, for those of you that are listening that don't understand what Coach is talking about, the reality is they're not supposed to be there. This nope. is like spycraft here. They're they're not. They're supposed to let you go through your walkthrough, which is you're basically walking through plays that you're going to do, how you're going to uh, be on offense and defense, and here they are just sitting there <laughs> watching Abilene, the other Abilene, team. Abilene Gate. There you Abilene go. Gate, yeah. There I, you go. I have I have been educated the last week that when when you go to Texas and play that there's I call it gamesmanship, but that you're going to get 
treated poorly um and and that's what happened so last week we got the film and there's plays missing off the film mm -hmm. and and when you call them they're like oh we didn't know about that i'm sure you did <laughs> yeah, yeah you were there yeah. you, you get put the, the tape together <laughs> you get the two deep on on tuesday when you're supposed to get it on monday and the two deep comes in and it looks like it's done by a really well-educated third grader yeah um and and that's cool and then on purpose yeah. right i mean this is all done on purpose division one football it's, yeah. sta it's standard for the visiting team to have yeah. towels so you're supposed to have towels to, to shower and stuff after the game. Yeah. Well, you go in after the game at Abilene, there's no towels. There's no towels to be found. There's nothing. Uh, they want you to get on the bus and the airplane as stinky as you can possibly be for the <laughs> way home. I was going to say, it's a Christian university. You could just air it out. I'm sure they would have towels for the next people. <laughs> just yeah. walk out and air dry. I, I'm, I, I'm, a, I'm a Christian, but but I, I, th I think some people more than others, <laughs> it's a loose term now. Yeah, fair. Yeah, they, more, more, more so than it should be. Um, and anyhow, hey, and enjoyed the gamesmanship. Um, the, the, all the favors will be repaid. So on the game, yeah. um, had, had opportunities just like the last three weeks. Had opportunities. Um, we, we're, we're sleepwalking through the first quarters on offense, and yeah. we've got to get that fixed. Um, it, it's a, it's a sign of a, of a football program that, that and a football team that's kind of kind of finding out who they are and what they're capable of. Um, but we, we've got to do better in first quarters on offense. And uh, we had a couple of fourth. We had a fourth and one, fourth and two. I made the decision to go for it. I'm going to continue to make the decision to go for it. Yeah. Um, I, I, the players have to get on the same have to get on the same page with our coaching staff. Our coaching staff is going to be aggressive, and we're going to err on the side of aggression. And the players have to err with us. But we missed some opportunities there in the first quarter, first quarter and a half on the fourth downs. Um, in any way, they um, we, we were down seven most of that time. Um, we, we were able to get three points there in the second quarter, and then they got a touchdown. We went in down 14-3. to three. Um, did, did what we always do and, and played a little better in the second half than we did in the first half. Um, but, but at the end of the game, John, too many critical errors. And I can't give you the exact times when, when the critical errors happened. We, th we threw an interception that was hard to recover from and then turned around on the following drive, and we go three and out, and then the snap's over the punter's head. Um, so we gave them two short fields for scores. Now our defense showed some resolve in that fourth quarter and didn't give them the second score. So we, we had a – Oh, say, yeah, that goal line. Fir first and goal on the one. Smashed them. Yeah, four, four straight downs. Our kids stepped up, and, and we hope that's a sign of our defense coming of age. Um, I, I'm, I'm sitting here talking to you. We're young. We're, we're young, but long story short, at the end of the game, you know, they had 21. We had 18. We didn't do quite enough. I'm, I'm sick. I, I'm, I'm, I'm sick about it, and I'm sick of coming in here every week and saying, hey, we just didn't do quite enough. Winning is a learned skill, and two things we have to learn. We have to learn how to finish things, and we have to learn how to win. And, and once we learn those two things, we're going to be successful for a, a lot of weeks and a lot of years. Repeat that. We have to win, we, or we have to learn how to finish. And what was the second one? We have to learn how to win. We have to learn how to be successful. Yeah. I don't like to use the term wins and losses. But, uh, success. Yeah, success. Yeah, or or execution of the plan, right? If you yeah. execute, you're going to win. Hey, you got to finish. got to yeah. finish. Our, hey, we, we, we had opportunities <laughs> offensively, defensively uh, to finish the game, and we, and we weren't able to finish. But we if, if we learn how to finish, we're going to be successful. And then uh, you, we're recapping the game. But, boy, we were awful on special teams. So just, just not very good on special teams against what we had determined maybe the worst special teams – group in the conference we were playing against and they just got the better of us on special teams we have to do better there yeah so going in um, as you're reviewing the the part of the tape they sent you um the uh the opportunity my guess in the coaching room was hey we we have we actually have the upper hand here on the special team side right uh it looked like it was a weakness now talk to us about <clears throat> well we don't need to go in specific plays but um you know that fake punt that mm -hmm. you gave them a short field um, it's on me. It, it, it's it's on me. It's not on the players. That they they ran a skill guy out there that's a lot more athletic than their punter with a similar number, and and, and didn't see it. And it, it it's it's me. It, it starts with the head coach there. I needed to see the change. Our coaching staff needed to see the change. We should have recognized it and been able to call it out to our kids. Yeah, but we didn't. But on on I was I was going to get to the point where um, the reality is you you had the interception, you had the fake punt, you gave them short field on two of their scores, but the defense played. I mean, you you got to be happy. They they score or they ran for 161 yards uh, on Stephen F. Austin last week, and I think they had 83 total rush yards. I mean, 
I don't know if that's John. Our defense exactly defense. accurate with the, with the exception day with the exception of the last drive of the first half. Our defense played well. Yeah, but played well. And I mean, if you if you want specific players, our defensive line played very well on Saturday. Sure. Uh, this guy beside us, Con- Connor Cullimore, um, had eleven tackles, and and he, he you know I'm not going to tell him how good he is because I'm just going to keep talking about the five tackles he missed. Well, he knows. Um, that. Yeah, he, he knows. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> for sure. That's, that's that's what mom and dad and, and the misses are for. Yeah. Tell him how good he is. That's right. Um, I just want him to get better this week than he was last week. Sure. Um, but but yeah, we played really really well. Hey, Rod Rod Ward, Roger. Ward uh, at, at the safety position does not around. Uh, he flies around, and, and Roderick makes plenty of mistakes. But boy, he plays hard. But our linebacker core played pretty hard on Saturday. Our defensive line played lights out. Yeah. So hey, hey, and I, I'm I always get off rambling, but but you're yeah yeah we're we're, we're happy with the way our defense played on Saturday. Uh, it's 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 now the following game, and let's see if they can do it two weeks in a row. Yeah, absolutely. <clears throat> um. Okay, so I think we've we've pretty much recap anything else you want or do you want to add anything uh connor on that game what you were seeing what was out there what was the feeling how did it feel to to stack those guys up on the goal line at first and what was it two um you know if, if you have any comments uh how, how, how was it on the on the field out there yeah no nothing that's already been been said about you know figuring out how to finish and figuring out how to be successful as coach was saying um but that that goal line stand it to me, it was just it kind of was just the future of what our defense is really about, and um, we just got to get more consistent on a week to week basis and on a day to day basis in practice. And sure. um, but yeah, I thought our defense played really well, and uh, we had a lot of mistakes, but we just got to learn from them and and fix them this week in practice. And coach talked on the plan about getting five percent better this week each day, and uh, we definitely got to do that if if we want to flip things around. So yep, yep. Um, well, I do. I do like to see that that there is um, some positivity on that defensive line, the linebacker core. We got those safeties flying around. Um, there, there are some some things that we are learning. That's one another thing I was going to ask you. There's a, there's a few things, um, a few skills that you need to learn to win or to be successful. Uh, we talked about some that maybe are deficient that we still are learning. What are can you point out a couple that you feel like since you've got here that uh, the, the the young men have accepted uh, and are doing a good job of in that equation of how to be successful? Well, let, let, let's go to our motto. Uh, our motto is focus, fight, finish. And if you do all three, you're going to be successful in football and in life. Well, we, we're we're getting really good at the focus part. F- okay, we're we're getting really good at the fight part. We don't have any problem fighting. I mean, we we go into these really nice stadiums against these big universities with with with, with a little more than us, and and we fight now. So we're we're focused and we're ready to we're we're there to play and, and then we fight we fight for sixty minutes three hours of real time and now we just got to get to finish part right cool I have to get to finish part J- John when when you're at a place that hadn't had a lot of success recently the the players that that they hold back and they're afraid to put themselves out there. That they're afraid to, to, to put it all on the line to let it to put rip. them yeah to put themselves out there and what what young people don't understand that that some others do is is that if, if it's just different it feels so good it feels so good to put all of yourself into something and lay it all on the line and put yourself out there we have to learn how to do that and that's the finished part okay that's I mean that's that's a fair assessment right I mean um, people want to know. What's you know? What's the next step? And and that's it. That's, we hold back a little. Yeah, we need. Yeah, to, we, we 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 hold back a little bit. We need to give it. We need to give it that that just send it. I mean that's what the kids <laughs> say, right? Just send it. Yep. Let it rip. Cool. Um, with that, any other any other things on the recap of uh, this last last Saturday? Yeah. You you covered everything you want to. Let's talk quit about. talking about last Saturday and yeah. move on. We've yeah. we've watched the film. We've watched the film. We've had a walk through with the players. Um, we, we need to move on cool. on on to on to Stephen A. Perfect. Stephen so, F. Yeah, Stephen F. Yeah. yeah. So before we get to Stephen F, um, we've got Connor Cullimore with us, freshman linebacker. Coach, give him a quick introduction, and we'll we'll uh, we'll get to know him a little better here. You know, as as the greatest host in Cedar City history, you're supposed to give him an introduction before you start asking him questions, right? <laughs> Middleway through the show, you're just going, hey, 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 let's ask him three or four questions, and he, then introduce him. I said in the intro, I said he was with us yeah, in with, the very intro. Yeah. In, 
Uh, what do you need from me, man? Sing, hey, we got to sing a little bit backwards. So man. I've got the focus. Mm-hmm. I've got the fight, but I still need to finish a little bit on the go. execution of the show. I like, I'm going to take some notes. I'm going to come back Connor. 1% better next tomorrow. I promise. Connor Cullimore is our starting middle linebacker, married, return missionary, uh, 20, 21 year old. I'm not sure which, but I'm close there. Um, has done a great job for us. And then I've never, never lied to him behind his face or, uh, or, or to his face or behind his back um, that has been a pleasant, pleasant surprise. We didn't know what we were going to get from Connor coming into fall camp, and he's just done, done a great job. Um, that, that, that has a nose for the football and, and does a great job in space. Um, on top of that, he, he's, he's a pretty good student and come, comes from a great family in Arizona. I can attest to that. <laughs> I hang out with his mom and dad at a couple of the games. There you go. What great people, and you can, you can see that uh, – yeah, the the fruit doesn't fall too far from the tree. They now, say now, Connor. If your parents if thing. your parents are hanging out with this guy, they might be a little bit flawed. <laughs> well, look, there's, there's a flaw there somewhere. <laughs> hey, hey, I don't think hey, it's I don't think it's by their choice. Hey, hey, lapse in judgment. Yeah, I don't think it's I don't think it's by their choice, Coach. I uh, I hound him pretty good. Um, Connor uh, leading the team in tackles so far this season. You're a freshman. This is exciting stuff for for guys that pay attention to that. Um, tell us a little bit about where home is, where you, where you came from, and then um, we'll go into kind of uh, not so much the recruiting process, but what are the, the things during the recruiting process that made you uh, choose Southern Utah University. So give us a little background of where you're from. Uh, yeah, I'm from Gilbert, Arizona. Um, went to Highland High School and you know, I'm the oldest child in my family. I'm sure you you know that from my yep, mom and dad. Yep, that's right. Uh, the oldest. Very proud of you. But yeah. And then uh, right out of high school, I went on a, a two-year mission for my church, and I was in Sierra Leone, West Africa. Holy um, cow. For those two years. And uh, Hey, before we skip off of that, tell us a little bit about that experience. So you're in Sierra Leone, yep. Africa. Mm-hmm. What are some things that you uh, observed there? I'm sure it was a, m- a massive difference from Gilbert, Arizona. <laughs> what are some lessons you learned that translate into uh, your your football career here at SU? Yeah, it was a it was an amazing experience. Uh, I really loved it and uh, enjoyed it. And the, there's a lot of lessons I learned being over there. But uh, a few of the key ones that really stuck stood out to me was, uh, I guess, the first one was just be grateful for everything that I have and. Um, being over there with a different culture, different people than, than I'm used to. Um, I learned to put myself aside and focus on um, others and how to help out other people and yeah. learn from other people. And um, I would say before my mission, I was kind of a, a little bit of a, I don't know how to put it, a little In, sour. I was a oh, little. That doesn't I don't come know how a, to put it, but I was a little sour it, towards other people. It doesn't come bit, across at of, all. Um, but a. Uh, forgot myself really quick out there yeah. and uh, learned how to see other people and uh, their needs. And, and it really changed my life. It's awesome. Um, and then work hard, hard work. Um, I thought I knew that before I got out there, but, um, it was a little, I put it aside when I was seeing, you know, five, five year old little girls carrying five gallon buckets of water uphill and taking it to their house. Like and, two miles. Yep. And drawing, drawing water out of the well. And, I was like, I don't know what hard work is. You're right. And uh, uh, I really learned how to work hard out there. And uh, you know, those are just a few of the key things that I think I really took away. From, yeah, gratitude, from some selflessness, mm-hmm. and that that uh, when you, you know, I, went, <clears throat> I spent some time in the Philippines, and it was mm-hmm. a similar situation. There's a shock to the system, right? We got our warm beds and our full bellies and, and all that. And then when you go see some different circumstances, right? Are you, and you witness that and you understand what it is to, uh, to work for a living as opposed mm-hmm. like to, to work, to live, yep. you know, it, it's, uh, it's game changing. So mm-hmm. that's cool. Thanks for yeah. sharing that, that for us. And you know, there's a lot of recruits. There's a lot of people looking at SUU. Uh, you can obviously be successful. You can go on your mission and come back. Um, you know, it takes a, a different dedication, right? Yeah. To, uh, to be a football player. So what are what are what's some advice for some future uh, return missionaries that are be coming through our program, to 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 uh, stick with the programming? Sometimes you you can change your uh, you can change your focus and you can change things when you're out there. But if you want to play football and you want to come back here and you want to work hard, what's what's some advice for that return missionary guy that's coming off a mission that's going to be here in the next one, two, three, four years? What's something that you would say? Hey. 
in order to play football and in order to, to dedicate yourself, this is what you'd need to, to be successful. The first thing I would say is you got to make the decision for yourself if you actually want to come and play. Yeah. Um, that was something that I had to make the decision um, of, yeah, I actually want to go play, you know, college football. Sure. And then being honest with yourself, yeah, being, being honest, if you're not in it, if you just want to do it for, you know, a jersey or for equipment or for yeah. other people and stuff like that, um, you really got to ask yourself if you actually want to do this, if you want to put the work in. And, um, you know, another thing I would tell people is uh, have the mindset that you're going to come in and make an impact on the program in any way you can. Yeah. Um, that was one thing that um, I set a goal um, while I was out there that, you know, I didn't have anything fancy to work out with when I was out in, um, on my mission, but you're I, in West Africa, yeah, you pour some yeah, concrete right. and some paint pails and <laughs> get a wrought iron and start lifting it. That's about it. Um, yeah. but I had the mindset when I got off my mission that I was going to try to come in and make, make an impact in any way that I could. And so I think that's another key thing that, um, you know, return missionaries or any recruit that is coming here that you got to have that mindset and then outwork people try to outwork um everyone you can and and try to prove yourself in through that because um, i'm a true believer in hard work doesn't go unnoticed yeah so i mean those are just a few few things that i would advise on return You're missionaries and stuff. wise young man yeah agree i'm glad he's on our side 100 percent agree <laughs> yeah um what's th what's the difference biggest difference that you found playing at this level you're a freshman the last time you suited up was uh at highland high school, high school yeah right like w it's a different game give 100%. us your perspective of of those changes from going from the high school game to the the college game yeah well um to state the obvious that everybody's bigger stronger faster than high school and for me it, the biggest difference has been um i played safety and running back in high school and played got here in January and found out I was going to play linebacker. And when I got here, I started out as an outside linebacker. And then uh, by the end of spring ball, I think we had a week and a half left of spring ball and I got moved to, to Mike uh, right in the middle. So uh, for me, it's been learning a whole new position and uh, the speed of the game is definitely another big difference. So, so shout out to the coaches for putting him in the right place. Cause obviously he's performing in, in a spot that he's never played before and the coaches are able to uh, assess talent and <laughs> speed and maybe some uh, football understanding and get you in a place to be successful that maybe you hadn't thought of before you got here. That's another selfless, like I, I know some people come in and they're like, hey, I play receiver. And the reality is they'd be an amazing cornerback if they just let go of what they think they are and allow the coaches to put them in places to succeed and trust that. So good for you yeah. for for having that trust in it, and good for you for notice, noticing. It was it was the assistant. It was the assistant coaches. Sure, his, sure. his his attitude leads to success. You heard him just say, "I, I just wanted to play." Yeah, I just wanted to play. Yeah. Now I went to college as a 170 pound quarterback, graduated as a 229 pound fullback, and I, I realized very early in college that I wasn't a college quarterback. I was no good at it. And I had to find a way on the field. So yeah. you look, you look around. Hey, where where can I get on the field? Sure. Yeah. How, how can I make the bus for away trips? How can I dress for home games? And then after you get to that point, how do I get on the field? Yeah. Yeah. Find a way. Love it. Um, you you you, you, you touched on this. His 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 upside is tremendous now. Con Connor's doing a nice job for us now. He has a chance to be twice as good a year or two from now than he is now. That's exciting. I got a long way to go. Yeah. Yeah, but. You know, t today's a different day than yesterday, and you just get better. And with the work ethic and the team mindedness, I like I like a guy like you because you know you know um, you know the drill, you know the system. And, and to me, you said that hard work uh, never goes unnoticed. Well, it doesn't go unnoticed by your coaches, but it also doesn't know go unnoticed by the guy that's pushing you for number two and number three right? Like they realize that in order for me to get on the field, I'm going to have to push it that much harder because Connor is right. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's great for team uh, chemistry in that competition inside the team to, to see who's going to get out there. I, I'm a huge, huge uh, fan of competition at, we've played <laughs> golf before. 
you've never really seen my competitive side because you know i mean it's not really a competition when me and connor, connor he doesn't want there. he doesn't want to rehash this <laughs> no he but, but no. hey, hey but in late <laughs> but in late beat july me once in late july I, I shaved a lunch and, and, and a couple of sodas off of him on the golf course. It was on one there hole. Right. It was closest to the hole. He beat me. He made the putt. Hey, Connor, we're never competing again. <laughs> well, no, that was it. No, well, that's false. <laughs> take that's it, take false it and run. Information. That's take it. it and run. No, see, if, if you don't compete with me again, then that'll that'll deprive it's like Vill- you hey. deprive yeah. you from the opportunity for, to for grow. The, for the elders out there listening, it's like Villanova against Georgetown in the nineteen eighty five finals. Yeah. <laughs> Lose to them four times in one season, but you get them on the fifth try. Yeah, that's exactly what it was like. Okay, um, Connor, I hear you um, are married. You have a beautiful wife. Tell us, tell us a little bit about uh, Secret. Yep. Is that her name? That is her name. That is the probably one of the. I mean, we've got an honesty and we've got a secret going on the football team. This is this is good stuff. Tell me. We've about got a we've got a Connor spelled funny. Yeah, Connor with a K, <laughs> right? A Connor fit and H K O H K O H N E R. There okay. you go. I like it. First, so, te- first team all name. Hey, you know what I heard? What I heard about your wife? I heard that she's faster than you. Is that true? She's not faster. Than you. I don't know. I've I've heard that from pretty reputable sources that she's faster than you. She, she she'll give me in a four hundred. Okay, there you go. You that, heard that's it here. About it. I'm, that, I'm too competitive. You know to what? Lose. We're going to do this now in front of the team. Yes. Yes. Y'all are going to go 400 in front of the team. I set you and up, And I will Connor. make sure that she is extra motivated. I set you up, buddy. That's Just my give me bad. like three months the in team. advance. No, 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 no. We're going to do it during the season. <laughs> We're going to put the players After out. After you've been banged the play, up. Yeah, the players are going to get out there in lounge chairs. <laughs> yeah. And, That's awesome. So, would, but she's a sprinter. She's a sprinter. Yeah. yeah. She, she runs the 100 and 200. Um, I don't really know if what relay she'll be on here, but she she her main thing is the 100 and 200 awesome i like that's that's awesome um so so it is true that she's faster than you but it's also (laughs) false she's faster than you in the 400 but maybe not in the one i'm gonna make her happy yeah she's not faster than me in the one for sure but 400 i'll give it to her all right okay cool well that's see that's the balance we're gonna put that to the test hey secret secret get ready (laughs) (laughs) i'm gonna gonna provide an audience that'll make it tough for him to re-enter the locker room if he loses this is good stuff we we need to broadcast that get a sponsor for it that's it um hey so when you were being recruited, we we kind of went over this before, but when you're being recruited, how how did that process go, and what led you to make the decision to come to SCU? Yeah, my my recruiting process was pretty difficult. Um, as soon as I finalized on my decision, right before my senior year of going on my mission, um, I lost a lot of interest from other schools and started my senior year with basically no no colleges um, that had continued to talk to me. And so it was pretty rough, but uh, just went out my senior year and played. And um, about a month after the season, I got a, co- a call from um, Coach Elliott that used to coach here, running backs. Sure, yeah. Uh, he called me first and then basically told told me that he's like, we're interested in you. And I was like, okay, kind of whatever type deal. It's a month after the season's over. And then a couple weeks later, Coach Fernandez called me and um, he offered me, and it was a pretty easy decision because he was like, "Hey, we'll we'll let you go on your mission." And, um, pretty much right on the spot, I was like, "Yeah, uh, Southern Utah is my home." And uh, they recognized um, that that yeah. was important to you. Yeah. They wanted you, but they wanted you still in two years. <laughs> yeah, it meant it meant a lot to me for um, that process to happen, and learned a lot um, throughout before the. the offer even came learned a lot about just you know trusting in god and everything um his timing works out pretty well so that seems to be a a theme isaiah almost had that exact same comment last week that you know look life is a is a crazy scary wonderful exciting depressing thing right and sometimes you know you're on the up and sometimes you're on the down but ultimately Everything smooths out in the end. For sure. And things happen and lessons are learned along the way. Super smooth decision for me to decide to come here. And I'm I'm very happy I'm here, so. Awesome. Love to hear it. Um, Usually we go through like a a really fast getting to know you. I think think that people know you by now. We don't need to know what your favorite food is unless you just want to shout it out and make sure that. Favorite color? Yeah. (laughs) What's your favorite color? Blue. Favorite food? Mexican food. That's, That's quick. See, done. Quick. <laughs> Coach, um, we've put we've put uh, Saturday in the rearview mirror. We've learned what we're going to learn from it. We've juiced it 
we're done with it. We need to move on to Stephen F. Austin. Give us a quick preview of uh, our opponent coming up this week. Yeah, best team in the conference easily. Came into the year, came into the year with a uh, preseason defensive player of the year candidate and a middle linebacker. Um, had the best, the, the the best offensive player returning in FCS football and a wide receiver number two. Um, good, good little player, and and if you want to get into a good story, he was offered a, a couple hundred hundred thousand dollars by several different FBS teams to transfer his NIL deal. Um, if y'all don't think they're cheating, they're cheating. Uh, the, these NIL deals and these FBS teams, if you've got a good player, boy, they'll cheat now. And you call you call mom and dad and offer them five six hundred thousand dollars for him to transfer right then to play, but he he had those offers um, and decided to stay and be loyal to the coaching staff that gave him a chance out of high school. Wanted to stay and play with his buddies. Wanted to stay and play for another conference title and a chance at a national title. I have a lot of respect for that young man. Got a chance to meet him at the media days this summer in Houston, and, and just just a well rounded young man. Um, I, I should know his full name, but I don't. Number two, good player. Um, as good a wide receiver as there is in FCS football. Their, their quarterback was preseason candidate for player of the year, um, having a little bit of a down year for him. Um, but but their, their football program right now is the best in our conference, top to bottom. Um, John, in telling you that, there ain't 10% difference. The, the best team in this conference and the worst team in this conference, there's about 10% difference in, in all of it. And hey, whoever shows up that Saturday shows yeah. up. Right? They, they prepare all week. They prepare all weekend and show up on Saturday morning ready to play is going to be the better team. Whoever can execute and finish it. That's it. Yeah, finishing. Yeah. Yep. <clears throat> I'm excited. I'm excited. Uh, I'm excited to line it up again. At the, a little sour taste in, in our mouth. I felt like the the last game, um, we, we were in a good position to win that game. And, and I'm, I'm sick of having fun and losses, so I won't do that anymore. And... Um, <laughs> Uh, I am excited to to see Stephen F. Austin here. Um, I believe is it is it a s- one o'clock kickoff? A one o'clock kickoff. One o'clock Thank kickoff you. in Thanks Cedar City that. on Saturday, and you, you, you and we keep we keep talking the un, un, the unfortunate the the unfortunate part of athletics is is that losing teaches you a whole lot more than winning. Learning is a much um, much better educational tool, educational opportunity than winning. Um, John, we've learned a lot of stuff over the last three weeks. Yeah. And now it's time to turn it around. Amen. Hey, I got one last question. Um, this is a fan question um, from Sharon Brown. Shout out Sharon Brown and Brian. Love Sharon and Brian. Oh, and also shout out Dave Morris. It's his birthday today. Dave, Uncle Dave? Uncle Dave, 46 Happy years Happy birthday, Dave. Yeah. Um, so <clears throat> Sharon wants to know if there is if there's any truth to the to the rumor that there is a swear jar. It's true. True. And at this point in the season, what's the balance in the swear jar? <laughs> like you, you want to give them some details on this on the cuss jar, and then I'll I'll disclose the balance. Yeah, the swear jar is just you know say a certain words. You pay two dollars and you pay five dollars and you know, your coach says before you travel, you, you're required to pay your, your fine before you get on the plane before or bus. Before the plane, so, okay. So every, everybody pays. I like it. You have to pay before you dress or, or get on the airplane. Um, a big cuss word costs you $5. A little one costs you a dollar and then something in between. You know, the, at the last university I was at, the young men had figured out a couple words that I hadn't put a price on, so they started calling each other <laughs> during practice. <laughs> Um, Start getting creative. With well, they thought they were funny, so I tried to be funny too, and it's two dollars and fifty cents. Okay, okay. Which really, really pains uh, th- these young people to have to pull out change. Yeah. Oh yeah, it's like you just asked them for a kidney. You're right. Um, but we 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 do it. Um, um, but right now, uh, to answer Sharon's question, there's somewhere somewhere between ninety five and one hundred and twenty five dollars in there. Um, Sharon, I'm ashamed, I'm ashamed to say, but I have donated the most money to the cuss jar this fall. <laughs> I think, I think. Um, and that has nothing to do with what I say to the young men, but no, 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 no. It, it's, it's more of what I say to the officials on the sidelines <laughs> yeah, on Saturdays. Yeah. And Hey, if y'all saw our officiating, hey, you, you might let out a swear word too. Hey, I, uh, I said, I didn't want to bring up this question because Don't. I would, I would have to, well, no, this question that um, I just gave. Uh, it's because I'd have to go take a loan after that last game to get yeah. it paid. So that was tough. Yeah, it was, it was a tough. tough one. All right. Hey, um, any other parting parting uh, words, Connor? You've been a great. Thank you for coming on the show, Coach. Thank you. Anything else you uh, you need to to talk about to Thunderbird Nation? Connor, you got any shout outs? 
you know, just shout out to my wife, Seeker. She super supported me playing. And then Excellent. mom and dad and my family for, for always showing out to the games. And um, shout out to our whole linebacker room. We've really come together since the spring, and uh, it's a fun room to be in. So Excellent. He is correct. Boy, they've gotten better. So Shea McClure, Coach Shea McClure, special teams coordinator, linebackers coach, done a great job with those young men. Um, our linebackers are better than we thought they were going to be this fall. And Hey, they're all back next year. Let's go, Shea. Yeah, gonna, I like that guy. Going to be going to be better next year. Um, Connor Connor learned from Josh Dunn's mistakes and didn't leave mom and dad out of the shout <laughs> yeah, outs. No, uh, he's a smart kid. He went yeah. right out to the mom and dad and the mom, wife. The wife, yep. mom and dad, real yeah. quick. Um, hey, a special special shout out, and I'll try not to get emotional. Um, uh, J- Jim Walker is back home in in, in the hospital f- fighting the good fight, and um, Mr. Walker is the grandfather of our quarterback at Frostburg, Graham Walker. Um, uh, lo- lo- love that gentleman. Um, and, and when I got the news this morning that he was in the hospital, um, really, really had an effect on me because uh, the, the last three seasons he showed up to three or four practices a week in that convertible red Mustang. And uh, just, just, just the, one of the coolest gentlemen that I have had the pleasure to be around um, in my professional career. And having him at practice really meant a lot to me. But, um, hey, hey, Jim, love you. Uh, lo- love you, dude. And, um, uh, ho- hope you get better. Hey, 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 hoping that you get better and hoping that you get to ride around in that Mustang again. Much love. Yeah, we need to offer some some thoughts and prayers uh, on, on his behalf for Thunderbird Nation and make sure that uh, uh, he feels loved. So thanks, Coach, for... Great, for, great, great gentleman, great yeah, family. For bringing him on. Well, ladies and gentlemen, that, that's going to be a wrap. I'm John Smith for Colin Cullimore, for Delane Fitzgerald. That's the Coach's Show. Thanks. Go Thunderbirds.